again, YouTube. Today we've got a 2003 Subaru Legacy Wagon. It's the R uh, EJ25 2.5 liter. As you can hear, it runs great, but it's got a little puzzle. Coolant level keeps going down and down and down, and it does it like over a very long period of time. And then the car starts to overheat. So instead of just continuing to fill the radiator and top it off to keep it cool, we're going to try to figure out where this coolant leak is. Coolant's going somewhere and it never makes it to the ground. So it's obviously going through the intake or through the, the cylinder and out the exhaust pipe. I've already done a compression test on the car. The results weren't great, but they were very inconclusive. So what we're going to be doing with this car is take the windshield washer bottle out, take the entire air cleaner system out, we're going to open up as much room on each side of the engine as we can. We're going to pull the spark plugs out. We're going to use an Actron compression tester, same compression tester I did the compression test with, but what we're specifically after is this hose right here. We can put this into the cylinder through the spark plug hole, hook it up to the compressor. We're going to put air pressure into the cylinders one at a time, and we're going to figure out which one causes this radiator to percolate, and then we're going to determine from there which side of the engine we're going to be replacing the head gasket on. Alright, just to cover a couple of things, the car's been losing about a half a gallon of coolant, uh, probably two to three hundred miles, best I can guess. So while we're taking all this stuff out, I just wanted to go over a couple of things real quick. We verified there's no chocolate milk or anything like that inside the oil cap. The oil level itself is good. That oil, that is gross. It's extremely overdue for an oil change, but there's there's no coolant in that oil either. So this coolant is going straight through from the cooling jacket directly into the cylinder and getting burned in out the tailpipe. So what we're gonna be doing is tearing all this down and we're gonna figure out which side is acting up. We're gonna start by taking the windshield washer fluid bottle out. It's a really good idea to know in advance all the bolts that you're going to need to remove so that you can pre-soak them with penetrating oil. Makes things a lot easier. There's two bolts up on the top here, they're 10 millimeter. The bottle sits down into a little hole in the bottom. Pull the wires up and off the side of the support. Underneath the fuel pump, the fuel filter. Mm, we're probably going to lose a little bit here. But disconnect that line. Squeeze the little tabs. Un remove the plugs. Some don't like to release. Give you enough wire to move around here. And the bottle out of the way. The reason we're removing this windshield washer bottle is so that we can get down in here to these two spark plug caps. We can remove those and then start over to the other side. We're going to take the air cleaner out, whole air cleaner system, all of this. Somebody put a piece of screen on here probably to keep leaves or moths or something from getting sucked into the intake. 
fine by me, but I have to remove this to get to the bolts underneath. We start back here, again 10 millimeter. And you want to be kind of gentle with these. With, with, where I am, I'm up in the rust belt. Everything up here corrodes all the heck. So basically that's the biggest reason for all the penetrating oil is you need to get all of this stuff soaked, get all of that corrosion. Loosen up that hose clamp. And I got two spring clips. Got one right here, one on the other side that's the same. Squeeze those, slide, slide the ring down. Couple of the hoses. Uh, you can either pull out and remove your intake air temperature sensor or unplug it. I just pull them out when they come out. And lift the air box off. I'm gonna set the air box aside. This stuff over here, oh, that's broken. Rubber mount rust jacked. The rust got right underneath it and just detached it. Well, this is coming out. We might not actually have to remove this piece, but I'm sure I will just to get it out of the way. We got one, appears to be a 12 millimeter bolt holding this down. The spark plugs are sitting right behind this. So, this one I didn't spray yet with penetrating oil. Give it a shot. All right, that was coming out okay. And part of an air baffle system to quiet it down and smooth out your air intake. Set that out of the way. And this bolt, because this is just like an oddball bolt, I'm going to set that back in the hole so we don't lose it. Um, I like to, when possible, put bolts back in where they came from. Makes it a lot easier and not have to deal with the guesswork later on. You got it all apart like this. Do a visual inspection of everything in the process. Just make sure everything is okay. We're going to be taking all of these spark plug wires out. Nice and clean. something but otherwise there's no oil on those now we'll get over to the other side of the car that boots clean free of oil That boot's also clean and free of oil. So next we're going to take out all the spark plugs. Okay, when taking out the spark plugs, I, I like to use a swivel. It really decreases the chance of you breaking the porcelain of the plug. We got three out of the four already out. They're brand new spark plugs. They were put in probably uh, maybe three or four thousand miles ago. I don't have the little rubber thing in there anymore that pulls the spark plug out for me. So the trick is use your spark plug boot, push it down in, pull it back out, and pull it out. Okay, now with all engines, when you're standing in front of it where the belts are facing the engine, the cylinder that's closest to you is always cylinder one. In this case, this is one, this is two, three, and four. It's also labeled on the top of the coil as such. I put all the spark plugs on each side of the car, over here and here according to the cylinders, and over here. Always take a really close look at your spark plugs because they're a really good diagnostics tool. These spark plugs are, like I said, they're, they're new. And they've got some carbon built up on them, but it's just black and it's, it's dry carbon. 
This one here, a little bit of discoloration. This one's been burning probably a little on the hot side, but it's it looks fairly clean. This one over here from cylinder number two, it almost looks like there's a little bit of a white chalk. And that white chalk might just be from coolant. No, there, there's no real excessive carbon buildup around the plug right here. Where the other ones, cylinder four, has carbon around it, but it also has a little bit of, like a white tinge to the top of the, the ground element. But we'll, we'll know for sure once we put pressure into the cylinders which one's causing the problem. But otherwise, these spark plugs look pretty good. My guess is going to be cylinder number two. Okay, we're going to be using the Actron compression tester kit. I need the adapter for the spark plug and your hose, but an important note, there's a Schrader valve in the bottom of this that'll block you being able to blow air in. So you're gonna need to take that Schrader valve out. You don't wanna lose it, because you're gonna need to put it back in for compression testing. Thread the adapter on. Thread it down into your spark plug hole. We're going to start with cylinder number one. Got it in snug. Take the hose, we're going to couple it. Now, because I don't know where this engine is, as far as top dead center, compression stroke, exhaust stroke, I don't know what's going to happen when I hook this up. Okay. We've got no percolation over here. Got no percolating going on over here, so we know it's not that cylinder. All right, hook up cylinder number three. Again, over here at the radiator, nothing going on. On cylinder number four. And you hear coming out the intake, so I gotta rotate it 180 degrees. Basically only guessing at about 180. All right. And again, nothing coming out of the radiator. Now we're in cylinder number two, the cylinder that I suspect has been the problem. And again, we have no bubbles. That's a problem because we know we're losing coolant. Now it's a question of how and where. Maybe this isn't the head gasket, maybe it's a cracked head. I don't know. What do you think, YouTube? What do you think we should do next? We've done a compression test. We've done pressurizing the cylinders, looking for percolation and nothing has happened. Put your questions, comments, ideas, down below and we'll see where it goes from there.